All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lecture 8A. We'll continue the Cold War into the 1950s, talk about the 1940s a little bit. Remember that the Cold War will start, really take place at first in Europe, but this will quickly spread into Asia, the Middle East, South America, Cuba. Domestically, we have the fear of communism, and then also we'll get into space. And so this is where we're going in the 1950s. Okay, the Cold War will center around rebuilding Europe in the 1940s. Uh, specifically, we see the policy of containment by Harry S. Truman, uh, Truman Doctrine to help Turkey and Greece. Then we'll get the Marshall Plan to just throw money at Europe to make sure they uh, are rebuilt, but they're also democratic. Uh, we will get the split of Germany into four sectors. United States, Great Britain, France, and the Soviet Union, and also the capital of Berlin, which is in East Germany. As we go, you'll get, after the Berlin airlift, you'll get the creation of NATO, and later the response by the Soviet Union in the Warsaw Pact. You'll also get Winston Churchill uh, giving us this iron, uh, iron speech, iron curtain speech, which you can see in those nations that are light red. Now, the major event and kind of our first big climatic event in the Cold War is the Berlin Airlift. This is where Stalin kind of pushed Truman's buttons. He didn't allow any supplies by road or highway into um, West Berlin. Truman's options, give up West Berlin to the Soviet Union, doesn't take that into account. Use force, doesn't really want to do that. And so he orders an airlift of all supplies needed for Berliners for 11 months. Everything they could need is flown in, round the clock, nonstop. Okay, we're not going to let them win. They're also going to have to shoot down one of our planes, which makes them look like the bad guy. However, Truman's going to be put 60 bombers capable of holding nuclear weapons. And remember, the Soviet Union doesn't have nuclear weapons yet. And so this is going to uh, put a fear into Stalin. Stalin's going to back down. This is going to give credibility to the policy of containment for Truman, and he's going to continue this policy. But there are two events that also happened in 1949 that will elevate the game. First, the Soviet Union explodes their nuclear weapon. Okay, and so now it's not just the United States, it's also so Soviet Union, and this is where we get the start of the arms race. Second, China falls to communism. I'm going to remove my face. Okay, we'll put it right there. No, we'll put it right there. Okay, falls to communism. This was a civil war that was happening before World War II between the nationalists and uh, the communists. It will be basically put on halt, halt till after World War II, continue to be fought, the United States will give like $400 million to the nationalists who are corrupt and efficient, and most of that, like 80% of that supplies will fall in the hands of the communists anyways. This is where Republicans will look at Democrats and say, you lost China to us uh, or for us. And so China will fall to communism. The nationalist uh, government will move to an island called Taiwan, which you probably hear in the news, and will recognize Taiwan as the government of China until... 1979, okay, and what makes us even more scared and kind of solidifies the spread of communism is the agreement between the Soviet Union and China in 1949. Penny just woke up from a nap. Okay, we'll continue. Now, with that, in Truman's later years, you'll get the Korean conflict, okay? After World War II, Korea, which had been part of the Japanese Empire for numerous years, was split at the 38th parallel. Now, remember the Soviet Union joined the war, will take northern Korea. With their troops, we'll take southern Korea. With our troops, we'll put pro-communist, pro-democracy uh, governments in place. And our armies will basically leave in 1949. Now, North Korea, a surprise to basically the entire world, invades wanting to unite the Koreas together. Truman will go to the United Nations and the Security Council and say, hey, look, we need to stop this spread of communism, okay? And we need to act now. We need to send in troops. Now, the Soviet Union, who had veto power, and they, they could veto this, right? Security Council 
one person vetoed, we're out. Remember, we don't recognize the Zedong's communist government in China, so they're cool, okay, with it. And Soviet Union is boycotting the Security Council right now, so they're not there. So United Nations goes in, this will be called a police action. Under MacArthur, he will be able to do the Incheon landing, basically being able to push North Korean troops all the way to the northern border of Korea. China will say, hey, dude, you're getting a little close. Don't get any closer or we're going to invade. And he keeps going. He keeps going. China says, stop. We don't. Chinese forces flood across the border, pushing the United States for the, uh, forces back to the 38th parallel. I shouldn't say United States forces. Although they made up most, it was the United Nations. Okay, pushes us back to there. One of the biggest, ugliest defeats in American history. And will span from 1951 to 1950 three at that border. During this time, we'll have the rift between MacArthur and Truman. Truman says, hey, policy containment has worked. Okay, MacArthur is a military guy known for bringing the Philippines back, going back and taking it from Japan, rebuilt uh, Japan or rebuilt Japan after the war. He's kind of an American hero, says, no, no, no. We need to go with our full American might at these people at North Korea, bomb them, invade, even invade China and bomb China. We have to get rid of communism in Asia. Truman says, hey, you really need to stop saying this out loud, especially in newspapers. MacArthur doesn't. Truman fires him. He comes, MacArthur comes home to like uh, parades, a hero's welcome. Truman, political capital, mm, shot. Okay, but July 1953, now under Eisenhower, we'll get um, the peace treaty um, between North Korea, South Korea, the DMZ will be created, which we still have today at the 38th parallel. This will increase tensions between the United States and China for much of the Cold War until really we get to Nixon. And you can see that the invasion, quick, was a complete surprise. MacArthur's landing was an awesome military uh, victory. And then we see the giant military defeat. And then us settling in at the 38th parallel for numerous years of this war, where about 58,000 Americans died. And it's really known as the, as the Forgotten War because it's sandwiched in between World War II and Vietnam. This is also a time at the home front where the fear of communism is spreading. We'll see Hollywood constantly attacked uh, for communist activities, legislators, uh, Congress and Senate alike. Uh, will be fighting this. You'll get the uh, the House of Representatives Un-American Activities Committee, or you'll see it as HUAAC. Okay, a young President Nixon in Congress will be one of the leading charges, kind of his claim, uh, claim to fame at first. Uh, he'll get this. Uh, he'll bring up charges against State Department official Alger Hiss, and he's convicted. Uh, later, we'll get another uh, very important case, Julius and Ethel Rosenberg uh, were said to have given uh, nuclear um, documents to the Soviet Union, and this was the after the Soviet Union used the nuclear weapon, we thought uh, there's no way they could have done it on their own, someone must have given them our secrets, and so um, that uh, were the Rosenbergs, and they'll be executed in 1953, but the greatest example of the second Red Scare is by a man named McCarthy. Okay, and it will become known as McCarthyism. He'll bas ba basically stand in front of the American public and say, I have the names of tons of State Department officials that are communist supporters. And this witch hunt will go on for a long time. It will stop, though, when he starts going after the Army. Not a good look, especially with Eisenhower in the office. And uh, he will basically be censured, uh, told to shut up nicely. Uh, and then go in this rapid decline where they'll die only three years later um, from alcoholism. Now, when Eisenhower comes into office, we get this idea that we each have nuclear weapons, so let's push it. Okay, And it was really brought up by the guy, uh, Secretary of State Doles. And, and it's the idea of brinkmanship, that we're going to push the verge of war and persuade the, our communist enemy to retreat, that our superiority in our nuclear weapons and our military will allow us to have victory. Okay, and also we get this idea of mutual assured destruction. That if nuclear weapons are used, the 
both sides are going to lose because we're both going to use them at the same time and no one wants that. So this is really why the Cold War is a Cold War is the ability to use nuclear weapons. Now at the same time, we start our involvement in Vietnam. After World War II, Ho Chi Minh, who had helped American forces against Japan, was really, really hoping that the United States would help him. He was a nationalist and a communist. He really didn't care who he got support from. He just wanted to unite an independent Vietnam. However, we are going to support a close Cold War ally and an ally for a very long time in France. And France is going to try to take back Vietnam and be fighting Ho Chi Minh. We will give a lot of money. However, Eisenhower will not use troops, although many people called for him to use troops. He will not, and France forces uh, will be defeated. And so at the Geneva Accords, you get France surrendering. Uh, you'll get the split at the 17th parallel. Ho Chi Minh will control the north. And below, you'll have the um, U.S. supported a DM. DM's going to be a ruthless leader. Uh, there were supposed to be free elections. However, there's not. DM doesn't allow them to happen because he knows he's going to lose. And, and so our support of uh, DM uh, isn't a good look in Vietnam. He is not well liked. He's Roman Catholic, which is a huge minority. He doesn't treat his people very uh, well. He doesn't allow the free elections. Uh, so this is going to build for Kennedy and then Johnson and the Vietnam War. Now, I would be remiss in not talking about the Middle East because this is the development of the Middle East that you people see today. 1948, the United Nations and the United States will support Israel becoming independent. This immediately will cause big conflicts between Arabs who have now been kicked out of their homeland Okay, and, and especially with Egypt, this will lead to the Suez crisis where Britain and France will support Israel's invasion for the Suez Canal. Not talking to Eisenhower, Eisenhower will be angry. He'll go to the United Nations saying, um, basically, shame on you, Britain, France, Israel, you guys need to back out. He does not want to get those Arab states against him. Why? It's because of the oil. Okay, and he doesn't want these Middle Eastern nations to fall to the Soviet Union or become partners with the Soviet Union. Great example, CIA supported coup in Iran as uh, the leader there before, uh, was not really pro-US petroleum business. So we needed someone in there to support us. This is what we'll get, okay? And so the big thing is to make sure they don't fall to communism, Middle East, or they're not partnered with communist countries, but yet at the same time we support Israel which Arab nations don't like. This is where we get a rise in tensions. Cuba, also at this time, will fall. Uh, 1952, Batista will take power. Basically, it's the United States colony. All business in Cuba is American business. We have our, um, basically, our shady legal mafia groups in Cuba that runs kind of the nightlife there. Uh, so really it's an American colony until Fidel Castro takes power and he'll slowly cut that off. When that is happening, the U.S. will start cutting ties with Cuba and it will become dramatically more as Fidel takes more power or gets more help from the Soviet Union. And so the Soviet Union and Castro will be partners by 1961 because we'll cut off all ties in 1960. Last but not least, we have to talk about Sputnik. The Soviet Union launches Sputnik, Sputnik 1 and 2 into orbit. Before this, the United States is seen as the technological power of the world. However, after this, we're not, especially when our satellites fail. And so the question becomes, what happened to American dominance? Eisenhower's response is two things. First, we're going to blame our education system. So in 1958, you get the National Defense and Education Act. Basically, hey, let's make smarter people so this doesn't happen anymore. And then also, we get NASA. Okay? And this is a big push by a couple guys named Kennedy and Johnson. We're going to see hundreds of million dollars to go into this. 
This is going to start the space race, which is also going to start the arms race. Until class, adios. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon.